Imagine a glass with a block of ice in it. If you leave it for a while, you will see that the ice will start to melt. Now we will get more and more water, until the ice is no more. If we leave the glass unattended for a long enough period of time, you will see that the water itself will start to evaporate, and there will come a time when all of your water is gone. In this video, you will see that this process is exactly what is happening to the universe, and you as well. Therefore, I think it is important that I make a video to spread the word, so stick with me for a few minutes. If you have been following me, you will remember that the ice became water and water became vapor. Now, we know that all of that is just water, but in different forms. So different are they that we had to come up with new words to call them, such as ice instead of solid water, or vapor for gaseous water. The difference lies in the arrangement of water molecules. In a block of ice, water molecules behave like soldiers in a Roman testudo, like the one you can see here. Here they maintain a close but comfortable distance, while being arranged in a way that rivals any military parade. In a water volume, the molecules are more like this wave of Chinese soldiers. Now they are still pretty close to each other, but there is a bit more freedom of movement and we no longer see the orderly structure of ice. In the vapor form, the molecules now basically refuse to see each other and have much more freedom of movement. Over the course of the observation, we can see that the water molecules have become more and more disorganized, or, to put it in another way, the chaos and randomness of this system of water molecules have been increased. Scientists refer to this disorganization as entropy, so there you can see, entropy is the amount of chaos and randomness in a given system, like the glass of ice that we examined. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of a given system will always go to the highest level possible, as long as the system is isolated, and it is allowed to evolve freely without intervention. That's why in room temperature, your glass of water will always evolve in the way that I described earlier. In case the temperature is at freezing point, the ice will remain unchanged, for it has reached the maximum level of entropy possible at that temperature. Do you know why even houses in good weather conditions break down? Yes, it is the second law at play here. Even when nothing bad happens to your crib, it will still crumble, albeit very slowly. Therefore buildings especially old ones need proper maintenance once in a while to continue existing. In the same manner, the second law explains the necessity of fridges, a place where we can keep dead pieces of life that tend to be of very low entropy. Like this piece of steak. It is full of protein, lipids and other types of complex molecules. But do you know what is also full of complicated molecules? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. But the second law doesn't seem to affect you as much as the piece of steak, although the composition is pretty similar. That's because you violate a very important clause of the second law, the clause of non-interference. You see, you can't just do nothing and expect to survive. Every day, you have to consume a certain amount of dead life. In doing so, you have added a certain amount of energy to your system, which is necessary for maintaining the orderly structure that is your body. If for whatever reason, you decided to stop eating, after a certain period of time, the systems of your body would run out of energy required for vital functions, and you will die. But even if you adopt a perfectly healthy lifestyle, the second law will eventually win in the long run. Just like the case of the house, your organs will slowly wear down as you age. That's why older people are more likely to be sick, and the oldest person to ever live was 122 years old when she died. Therefore, you can see that the second law simply forbids immortality, which was something that people like Chen Shi Huang desperately tried to realize and ended up dying in the process. In fact, some scientists speculate that not even the universe is immortal. A theory suggests that eventually the universe will reach a state of maximum entropy, meaning maximum chaos and disorder. Atoms will no longer bind together to form awesome structures like the one you're seeing, and I'm not sure even atoms can survive this mass extinction event. This is commonly referred to as the heat death of the universe, although it is guaranteed to be super cold. Should you and I be worried about this? Well, this event will happen in one Google years, that is one with a hundred zeros behind it. If you plan on living that long, this will certainly be a cause for concern. According to many estimates, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. So it's probably safe to say that the lifespan of the universe would be one Google plus 13.8 billion years. If you were to condense all of that in one day, humanity has barely made it past the first nanosecond. There is still a lot of time to explore what is out there, and with space exploration comes the question of aliens. Are we alone? Right now I am, but I cannot speak for the entirety of Earth. Not even NASA can be sure, after sending a disc up there telling the aliens how babies sound like. It is a miracle how life on Earth defied the second law and perfected itself, becoming so advanced that they have started thinking about moving out. 
Another thing that some life forms on earth ponder is the meaning of life. When faced with a question of whether life is ultimately meaningless or not, I tend to shy away from saying yes or no. Part of that is due to a lack of relevant knowledge, for which I refuse to give myself authority on this matter. I prefer to marvel at how life's defiance of the second law actually caused us to reconsider our existence. Meaningless or not, you can't deny that it was impressive for life to reach a point where they realized that some laws of the game actually work against them. Yet we are slowly becoming better players while discovering more and more rules at the same time. Scientists are the true gamers, and so are you, my friend. Whenever you are down, remember that by merely existing, you are defeating the second law of thermodynamics by refusing to let your entropy go high. I thank you for that, and for watching this video.